and welcome back to another episode of The Calling Uncensored. I'm your host, Sarah Rose, and I am here with Kimberly Barter today. She's our special guest. So excited to have her on the show. She is a poet, she is an artist, she is an author, and she is here to share her spiritual awakening story with us. And we're just going to dive right in and get started and see where this conversation goes. So thank you, Kimberly, and thank, thank you. Thank you so here. much. I'm so happy to be here. So grateful. Thank you. Yes, I'm happy you're here as well. So why don't we just dive in and get started with, uh, take us back to, you know, your spiritual awakening process, what you're feeling called to share as far as wow. your, your journey. Okay, buckle up. <laughs> we all have those stories, which is so amazing. We each have those, I know. But my personal one, what I can remember, I was just like everybody else leading a life. I was married. I had a, I have one son who's now 21. But um, at the time, I think it was 10, I, well, 10 years ago, um, 2010. Um, and so, yeah, it was around 10 or 11, uh, 12. And um, I was going through a divorce. I was, wasn't happy. It wasn't, you know, I just, we both fell out of love. And um, I was married for 22 years. Um, very happy um, relationship. And we just drifted apart. And at the same time, I had an aunt that passed away, my dad's sister. And I started hearing voices. I remember the night of her funeral, I came home and we got in bed to go to sleep, my husband and I, and I got a big bang on my right shoulder. And I said, what, what did you, and of course he didn't do it. And I'm, I'm waking him up, freaking out, you know, totally in a, in a state of, and looking under the bed. And he's, he's like, you know, just go back to sleep, you know, it's fine. And I said, I know it's my aunt. Anyway, that started, and I started hearing my name called. I'd be drying my hair, put the dryer down, and then I'd hear, and it was like a, a whisper, a loud whisper, like, you know, that kind of thing. And I'd turn around, nobody would be there. And so then that would, I remember being, I'll just give you a couple examples. I was on the beach with a friend and down at the shore, Jersey Shore, and I remember um, falling asleep on the beach, and I was getting burnt. And a loud voice in my ear said, Kim. And, I, and I, I got up so quickly and I woke my friend up and startled her. I said, did you just scream at me? And she said, absolutely not. And I said, did you hear anything? And she said, I said, you couldn't have missed that. That was so loud. And it was in my, you know, it was me. It was somebody, a spirit. And I, if I hadn't have gotten up then, and if she hadn't have gotten up then, we would have been in the hospital from all these burns, you know. Um, so I just had some, and, and I think in the beginning, with a lot of people that are waking up, the divine gives you these experiences to, to wake you up, you know? Um, and then that same aunt who passed away, my uncle uh, got cancer, and he passed away. And then I had an experience. My cousin and I, at Christmas time, were sitting in a living room. My aunt and uncle had gone to bed. I was over there visiting them during the divorce. And she happened to be on my heels going through a divorce. She was an attorney. And she and I are sitting in a dark room. There was a Christmas tree in the room opposite us and everything was black. I think David Letterman was about to come on at that time. Um, and this is like 2011, 12. And um, all of a sudden, what, beings in white light started filtering in one after the other into the room and my jaw dropped. I've never had an experience like this in my life. And aside from hearing things and, um, I said, Nicole, Nicole, they're walking in, you know, and I felt love and I knew they were all in white light, like diamond white light. You could see right through them to the Christmas tree in the other room, um, but you could see a shadowing of their lungs, which I thought was really interesting. And, but they were gliding, they had arms, but I couldn't see their faces, but different heights. And, I, and my cousin said, I feel static electricity. I don't see anything, Kim, but I feel it. And I said, well, what should I do? And Nicole, you know, she's very logical. She said, have them all come out and we'll call them one at a time. <laughs> and I said, my God. So we did. We said, can you all please go? And I can't believe I couldn't, I still can't believe I'm telling the story, but it, that's what we did. We had them all and they all turned around and obligingly walked out into the Christmas tree room. And I called my mom first because I lost my mom when I was nine of cancer, breast cancer. She came in and she hugged my cousin because my cousin was upset. And I said, you know, and every, every person that we, my grandmother, my aunts, even a little uncle, an uncle that had died at seven years old in 19, I don't know, 20 something of lockjaw falling off a horse came in as a child. I called Henry in and each one was really interesting, extended um, one hand. And I put my hand on top of their hand and I felt pins and needles, if I can describe it like that. And so she, she my aunt, my mother came and hugged my, leaned down and hugged my cousin. 
And I said, she's hugging you. And my cousin said, I can feel it. I can feel it. Because she was upset about her divorce and everything. She said, tell her, I, please watch over me and all that kind of stuff. But, and we got through everybody. And as they would come in and be greeted by us, they moved to the right and let somebody else come in. And this was about 50 people, 40 to 50 people. We just kept naming names. Finally, in the end, we couldn't think of anybody else. And I said, you know, Nicole, I've heard people have something called spirit guides. Let's see if I have one, you know? And she said, okay, you know, we were getting very adventurous. And my aunt was starting to wake up because we were making- This was in your living room? So this was, this was in my all cousin's living room, okay. yeah. All right. And so here comes my spirit guide. And it was very different than my, my family. The spirit guide was about five foot four and came bebopping out like a little rapper, like, doo -doo, you know, like bebopping out. And then instead, I say he because it, no sex, of course, but he just went bam and put both hands out. Not one like everybody else, but two. And later on, I found the significance of that because he's, they're, they're connected to the higher, my higher purpose and all that stuff. So I thought that was really interesting. One other interesting thing is I had an uncle come out, my uncle Eddie, my dad's uncle and he was in world war ii and he was he had his appendix taken out with no anesthesia in guam he was what you call cb and he got the purple heart and i didn't know it until the next morning and when he walked in you know i described everybody in diamond white light when he walked in he had a purple heart it was lav like a lavendery pink a purple and you could see his heart he was the only one and i said to my uncle the next morning which who thought we were both crazy the next morning my aunt and uncle they were thinking we were nuts at the table when we were describing this to them my uncle said you know your uncle eddie philpot had a purple heart he got in in world war ii i said okay and that just that you know that and that, so i found that so i just had a lot of it just started the ball rolling and i had one after the other um experiences with the divine very and I was healed because at the time I was going through, I had something called lupus and I was given at 1.5 years to live. And I actually had gone to um, a gynecologist um, locally and she saw something she didn't like. And I went home and I'll tell you, I've never told anybody this, but my son and somebody else, but I'll share it with you. It's going to go in my book. But um, I was sitting in my bed asleep. I was asleep. And all of a sudden, and this all happened what you call, I wouldn't call it dream time, it's a lucid state, I would, I would say it was called, because I was wide awake, but I was sleeping, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Um, all of a sudden, I felt this energy like whoosh in the room and everything was blue. It was almost like you see a television with static electricity. I mean, that's kind of black and fuzzy and gray. Well, picture it as blue. And the whole room was like energy, like, zzz, like buzzing. And the first thing, like, I'm a little bit of a comedian, you know, comedian. I said, that's not my energy. You know, that's not me. <laughs> and I was going through a divorce at the time. And my son wanted to go to spring training. And my settlement hadn't come through. And it was due to come through in June. And this was like March, early March. And he wanted to go for spring training for the Philadelphia Phillies in Tampa Bay in the worst way. And I could have asked my parents. I could have asked a lot of people. And I had a little bit of money, but I didn't have like $7,000, $6,000 to just go spend on a trip. But my son did. My son had, you know, every dime my, that he's gotten from his grandparents. And I thought, well, at one point it crossed my mind. Well, if I borrow it from him, I'll pay him back tenfold when I get my alimony and child support in June. Because I was due to get a lump sum. And um, I said, no, I'm not going to do that. I would never do that. So here comes. So I look in the corner. I sit up in bed in my lucid state after I said, this is not me. And I looked in the corner and it was Yeshua. And I, no expression on his face. And I, and I just heard, he didn't say anything. He just, I just heard Jesus, you know? And then he walked over, I'm gonna cry, but he, he put his hand on my chest and I was sick at the time. Um, I had, you know, that lupus going on and everything, but help me source <laughs> He put his hand on my chest and he pushed me down. And the weirdest thing happened, and this is really embarrassing, but I'm gonna say it anyway, because I'm speaking my truth. He went like a gynecologist, pushed my legs up and went up my, you know, whatever, and fiddled around. And I said, hey, wait a minute. And I heard Jesus again. And I just all got calm, but I was still watching, paying attention. I still had my head up like, what's this guy doing? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, he stopped and um, the scene switched. Mm -hmm. I was in a mall and Jesus was with me walking. And we went to this, uh, we were in like a food court and we went to get ice cream. 
and I forgot he was with me for a second. And I said, oh, I'm, I apologize. I forgot you were with me. And he, and he didn't say anything, never said anything the whole time, the whole time. And then all of a sudden we walked up to this ice cream place and there was this lady there and her husband was in the back. I didn't see him, but I said, I want this so, such and such ice cream. Then Jesus ordered some ice cream and the husband and wife were bantering back and forth. We don't have that flavor. We have that flavor. And we, I went to go pay. And I said, oh my gosh, I don't have my purse. And Jesus had a satchel and opened it up. And inside his satchel was my son's Billabong wallet. Mm -hmm. And he said, use this. And that was my, sorry. That was my indication to use my son's money for the trip. So I did. And um, the next thing, <laughs> scene switched again. And the last and final scene, he was at my aunt's house my aunt and uncle's house in Philadelphia. And he was trying to get the door unlocked and he was looking at me and I was on the street looking at my aunt. She was having some distress, laying on like what I would call a massage table. And um, she was laying there and my uncle was upset because she wasn't breathing. And he was trying to get the door open, Yeshua. And I looked and I thought, why can't you, you can do anything. Why can't you open the door? Why do you need me to open the door, you know? I said, okay. So I went up and I opened the door. And the next thing we know, we're both standing over my aunt. And Yeshua was there and I'm here. And he puts his hands on her upper, like upper heart area. And she just went, <gasps> took a breath and started to breathe. And I just went, I was so, you know, I was so amazed and I turned and I wanted to talk to him and he was walking through the wall, walking out in all white. And um, my uncle said, that neighbor of ours is amazing. He saved your life, Timmy. <laughs> and I just said, that wasn't the neighbor. <laughs> that wasn't the neighbor at all, you know? And then I woke up and the most interesting thing, I woke up sitting up in my bed mm -hmm. and I had abdominal cramps. And I had abdominal cramps for about three days. And we left for Florida and I had abdominal cramps in Florida. Because, and then I came back, went to the gynecologist. And she, I, without telling her anything till afterwards, she said, I've never seen, I saw something in you and I didn't like the look of it. And I've never seen that disappear. It's gone, I can't find it. You're healed. Wow. Then, then I shared my story with her and she said, I believe it. Um, I believe in that kind of thing, you know, and she's, and, and anyway, that was a long time ago, but that one profound, um, profound experience I'll never forget. And I know it happened for a reason. First of all, it saved my life. Um, and then we got to go to Florida because of it. <laughs> and I paid my son back tenfold, you know, and, um, and then the last thing, it's always a message. And the last thing I was told, I was a healer, spontaneous healer. And I always have been, you know, once a healer, always a healer, many lifetimes. And that, you know, we can do just like Yeshua said a long time ago, we all have the capability to do what he can do and so much more. So I was just being shown that. And so, and then of course that piqued my interest and I became a voracious reader of all things spiritual. And you know how that goes. We all just, I couldn't read enough books. I couldn't hear enough movies about it. I couldn't, you know, I just educated myself on everything spiritual and just worked on myself for about eight to nine years. I'm still, we're always working on ourselves, but I was in a deep, 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 you know, uh, just inner work for that, that period of time. And um, so, yeah, so here we sit and I'm like many people right now are being called to get out there, baby birds being kicked out of the nest. And although it may be uncomfortable at first, you know, I'm diving right in, you know, the name of my, my business is, uh, which I just started, which I don't even have a business yet, but I just, I named it, I'm all in because I'm all in, you know, there's nowhere to, get. we're all in the, I put it like this, we're all in the same boat, you know, we're all in the same house, just different levels of awareness of who it is we are and enlightened, enlightened beings and and, and as you know, I'm sure enlightened beings and realized beings are called that because they realize who they are, that they're source energy, that they're extensions of source energy, that they're God, I'm going to say it, they're God. So we all are, and there's only one source here, and that's everything and all, and we're all moving in one direction, which is awakening, and you know, you can either go, and this is, and you know, I've experienced this, so I can speak on it. You can either go with the wind at your back and move forward, or you can turn around and be knocked on your, you know what, but you're still going that way. So it behooves you to wake up if you can, you know, and I know that everything's a divine time and order always. And those who have ears to hear will hear what they need to hear at exactly the right time and exactly, you know, and the first, and one of the first things I was so happy about, and I'm going to share this with you because it's my truth. I asked, 
I asked the divine, am I going to have to preach to people? Do I have to convince anybody? They said, absolutely not. You work on yourself. And as you work on yourself, that's, that's all your responsibility is to yourself, to your alignment with the fullness of who you've become, your alignment with your I am presence. And that's, that's what you concern yourself with. You can share your story with others and in hopes that it will spark a remembrance within them. Um, that's wonderful. We would love for you to do that. And that's what I'm doing now. So I just share my own personal story. I speak my truth and in hopes that it will spark in a remembrance because we're all, the, we're all one. We're all the same. You know? yeah, I love this. Um, you've touched on so many good points. What an amazing story. Um, that's oh, that's not, I have some more too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. It sounds I'll just like tell you real quickly. I left my scissors. I went to, went on that trip. I'm my favorite manicure scissors. I left in Florida and I didn't know I left them in Florida. I was running around the house, you know, not cursing up a storm because I don't curse, but just like, geez, Louisa, where are these scissors? I can't believe I must've left them down there. And my son, I was living in an apartment at the time because we had sold our house, so we got a divorce. And my son was playing tennis on the tennis court with a friend, and he was about 13. And um, like I said, now he's 21 uh, in college. But I was running around like my head cut off, and not even to think at the time to ask the divine. Of course, duh. You know, you, sh you could always, you should always surrender it to the divine. I, I surrender everything now to the divine. Um, I wouldn't. It's like brushing my teeth or putting my clothes on. I don't do anything in the morning without surrendering first. Um, but I walked out. It was a blustery day. I remember my son was playing tennis, and you, from the apartment that I had rented, I could see the tennis court. And I went to m move my welcome sign because some leaves had gathered on it, and to just dust, you know, to brush under it with the broom. And I took the um, I took the welcome mat off. On underneath the welcome mat was a rectangular rectangle. Uh, bleh, I can't speak. Rectangular shaped uh, sand two inches thick by about three inches long in a rectangle shape with my manicure scissors sitting right in the middle horizontally like presented to me like a gift. And the sand was white as white can be, just like clear water sand. Um, and it could, it was not Jersey Shore sand. It was not anywhere else sand. It was from, and that was their way of saying, you're welcome. We returned your scissors and you did leave them at the beach. And I was like, this is awesome. And I left some sunglasses down there. And I'm like, can you bring those back? And I, was, I didn't have any luck with that. <laughs> but the same day, I'll tell you a story real quick. The same day, my son came up. I believe it was the same day. And he said, mom, I went down on the tennis court. We played, we played tennis. And look what I found on my tennis bag. I said, what is it? And he said, perfectly shaped paper clip royal blue of a guitar he goes mom I think I'm supposed to start playing guitar and I said I think you are too. where was it right on my bag there was no mom I didn't put nobody was there on the court I said you need to take guitar lessons and um so I signed him up for a couple but he ended up teaching himself on the internet now he is in school for mu music he works at a label and he's a country music artist and coming out with a single um March 27th and so yeah, so, I mean, and I framed that paperclip. It's actually upstairs in his bedroom right now because I didn't want to lose it, and that's his story. He used, he wrote about that to get into his colleges and, and everything else, um, wow. and that's an amazing, and that was like the same day. So he got a gift and I got a gift, so I was really happy about that. <laughs> that's amazing. Um, let's talk about, real quick, surrender. What's, what, this is a big topic. This is a big theme popping up in my life always all as well. And really tapping into like what you said, I like what you said that I am presence and recognizing that we are not this, you know, physical body even and tapping into the true essence of who we are. What's been your biggest obstacle with surrendering? None. Okay. So what, what I've been told from the divine, you know, and, and they, they, not told, but you know, information I receive is they they want me they want every, all of us to lighten up and just to have fun and just to be. They said, you know, in Telos, I don't know if you're familiar. Are you familiar with Telos, um, the city in in California underneath the the mountain? Okay, well, there's there's fifth dimensional divine light beings that live there, and the ascended masters are there. The flame is a, a light lit, and they they have um, there's different in the fifth dimension. There's different like it's almost like a town of like, there's a building that's the temple of joy. There's a temple of anything, illumination. There's a temple of healing. There's a temple of whatever you can think of. There's a temple of there. And um, you can go there in meditation. You can ask to go there. But 
uh, and there's books about it, um, lit, written by uh, Aurelia, Aurelia Jones, I think it is. Aurelia, don't quote me on that. I know her name's Aurelia, but it's called Telos, Telos Volumes 1, 2, and 3. And you can find them on Amazon, I'm sure. Um, and they're amazing reads. Uh, but I went out there to visit Telos with um, my son, but that's a whole other story. Had amazing experiences. But surrender, back to surrender. Um, we're told to just lighten up and just have fun. And, and as I was telling you about Telos, the Ascended Masters are dancing in the Temple of Joy. I mean, they're, you know, at one time I went there in a meditation. I actually played, what's that? What's the game where you dance around and you freeze and, and then, you know, whoever moves gets out? <laughs> but anyway, we had, I did that with the Ascended Masters. Like, we, we, you know, it's, it's all about fun. And it's about joy and, and it's all about feeling good. And when you feel good, you tap into that, that treasure test. Some people call it a vortex, you know, um, but that treasure chest that we have, that the real vibrational reality, we tap into that. It's always flowing to us, but we can sometimes, you know, um, block it. Right. Yeah. Future. So when you were talking, I wrote down sense of humor and that's what was coming through to me um, because it is, it's like, I, when I communicate with my guides, they, there is such a lightness and a sense of humor, even the synchronicities and the signs I receive, you know, like there's a lightness to yeah, like, like for all of us to lighten up. And I said, I said to them, I'm not a comedian. They're like, we don't want you to be a, don't go overboard. You'll everybody, <laughs> that won't go over well. I'm like, oh, that's good. Cause I'm not a comedian. They're like, but just light, lighten, you know, and that's not to say everybody can do whatever they want, but you know, sometimes you've probably been to places and I've been to places where you walk in the room and they're all so serious about their meditations. Like, and I'm, you know, I'm just like, lighten up, you know, let's take our fun, you know, it's all about, because when you're in joy, you know, joy's the celebration is higher than joy in the vibration wise, but you know, when you're in joy, you're, you're in that flow and, and you're allowing everything that's already flowing to you to flow to you. And so, yeah. And, and, and also it's a, it's an interesting thing because when, 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 um, joy is present, fear cannot be present. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's no, they can't. That's just like walking in, you know, you're the, I'm the light and walking in a room that's, that's darkened and you turn on the light switch. What happens? It's, it's illuminated. Where's the dark? It can't exist. Co it can't co coexist with the light. That's just the light switch thing, you know, and that just it can't. So yeah, I love that. Uh, yeah. That's so, that's so, that's such a good point. I love that. Um, so then are you still open? Are you still, so you're obviously very clairvoyant and very clear audience um, and probably clear cognizant as well and things. Are you still that open? Because when I had my spiritual awakening, my gifts opened up and in yoga, I think they call it the cities and I might be quoting that wrong, but um, did, it, did it dial down for you? Or I know you said that you're an artist and you also, you know, channel with your artwork and things like that, but do you still see spirit the way you did when you first opened up in that? Well, living? see, like what I was starting to say is in the beginning, they really, the divine real, you know, it's about getting, waking you up, you know, yeah. and, and getting your attention. Yeah. And, yeah. and now I don't need that. You know, I know what's, I, yeah. I mean, I go out and, you know, I'll, yeah. Synchronicities everywhere, you know, okay. and I get everything, but it's in a different way. Um, you know, I just know I'm in the flow now. So I'm always in the yeah. flow. So I'm just, I'm always allowing, I'm always in the receptive mode and I'm always on the path of least resistance, which also is my most fun, my most joy and my most divine clarity at any given moment. So I, and I, I say that in the morning and because I like to look at it like this and it's an easy way to remember it. I think of, I'm always sitting at the table in a restaurant and the waiter is the universe and they're always taking my order 24, seven, three, six, five, always. So like, what am I ordering for myself? you know, and you don't have to monitor every little thought, you know, you just, you just throw it out there when you're in a good mood or when you're feeling good, start, you know, start, first of all, know who you are. It's the most important thing. Tell the universe, you know, who you are, make it again, you know, make it fun. I'm God up in here. You know, I walked around and I was like, I'm magnificent. I'm God up here. That's the first thing they told me. I went to once to chant when I was exploring and trying to find out and reading everything I went to somebody who supposedly channeled source which they did source energy is everything you know so but I went and they said you know you're and Raf, Archangel Raphael told me this too in a channel you, you know you're magnificent we're all magnificent, we're all we're magnificent. Not, yeah. and and I said oh yeah that's great at the time I was like yeah okay and we want you to see the divinity light within yourself within all things and all others I was like well I do that already <laughs> and they're like no you don't <laughs> 
that's you know? funny. And boy, oh boy, did I not do that did all the time. Not, yeah. Even yes. now, you know, we're all expanding. Even Jesus is expanding and evolving. The whole universe is continuously, there. it's just, beyond, you know, it's just crazy. It's just yeah. expanding and evolving. There is yeah. no, you know, so I'm just here to, you know, I, and finding your own light is very, I mean, that is like a lot of people, you know, I always say everybody's a light worker because it's really just everybody's on their own path, but ultimately shining your own light from within and tapping into your own source, tapping into your own divinity, really under, know, coming into a knowingness and a presence and an awareness of what that is. It's not the same as just saying you know what it is and, you know, namaste, the light within me honors the light within you. I don't know anything. I don't know anything, <laughs> but, but I've gathered tools to help myself, which I know can help others, you know, so that's what I like to share. Things that have helped me that I still do that, that I've seen, you know, with I experienced because we words don't teach only experience does. So I've experienced these things as, as really being awesome. So I share, I share who any, if anybody asks me, I share them with them, you know, like mm -hmm. I heard the other day, um, I was watching a channel and I heard, you know, you should get a piece of paper and you can try this and put a line down the middle and your to-do list on the left and the universe's to-do list on the right. So I did. And I was like, I'd really like to find somebody. One of my friends said to me on Instagram, well, what do you put up for the universe? They weren't sure how to do it or what to ask for. You know, yes, for anything. But I put my to-do list and I'm like, what do I want from the universe? And I'm okay. I would like to find somebody in integrity, a publishing company that I could you know, partner with that would be in integrity because I know, you know, you search the internet and you just want to make sure that's in alignment with, you know, what I know to be true and, you know, and what, whatever, but in integrity was my biggest thing. And, um, that would be for my high school and the high school of all through pure unconditional love and light, blah, blah, blah. So I wrote that and a couple other things. Wouldn't you know the next day, like I saw your podcast pop up, somebody else's podcast popped up. Somebody called me for another podcast. And then, um, and then I found, I was in the shower the other morning and I heard, go downstairs right now and get online um, and look, check your emails. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I'm going to go have breakfast. And they're like, right now. We didn't say <laughs> breakfast. I'm like, okay. So I got out of the shower and I came down and I, I looked at my emails and I saw this woman's publishing summit for free. It's, it's happening this week for Women's Week, um, International Women's Week. And so everybody that's in publishing, I guess some self-publishing people, traditional publishing, all the you know, the, the good ones in the industry or the best ones supposedly out there are on this summit and having little podcast meetings. So I pulled up, I went right to this one woman and she had a publishing company, traditional publishing company and self-publishing and coaching and everything, you know, and she was spiritual, you know, it was her, in her title was the word matrix. So I was like drawn to her immediately. <laughs> so uh, and she was being interviewed and, and she was amazing. And I thought, oh my gosh. And she was doing some kind of interview with the Dalai Lama and Sting. And I was like, that's the one I want to work with. And I've been researching for a couple months now. And finally, I put it on my to-do list and the universe just, you know, I had to ask. And yeah. so I, I, had a, I called her up and I got her on the phone. I'm like, isn't that something I happened? To, she goes, yeah, I never usually, my, my staff's usually here, but they went out for coffee and I'm manning the phones today. I'm like, yeah, what a cool, that's why I had to get right out of the shower. Yeah. What a coincidence. So now I'm partnering with her and I'm writing my book. And, you know, I told her a little bit of what it's about, like what we're talking about right now and my journey. She's like, oh, she's real excited. And I actually just talked to them today. And so I'll be starting that soon. Um, but just goes to show, you know, when you're in the flow and you're feeling good, um, you're able to hear the messages from your, from your inner being. And then it's all about taking inspired action on those with those messages that you hear, yes. like not getting breakfast, going right to the emails, yes. you know. <laughs> yes. It's all about being open to receive, getting into that vibrational state of receiving and then recognizing the, you know, the messages when they come and taking action on them. Just like you said, so beautifully, that is such a, an amazing thing. Um, I never finished on surrender. Let me tell you about surrender oh, okay. real quick. All the right. surrender um, thing is, is very easy. I had a, a good friend of mine and she said to me, I can't ask God or Jesus or any of the masters or, to, to help me with this. It's such a minuscule problem. I said, mm. <laughs> they're omnipresent. They're everywhere. They, they're they wanting, they're hovering around you, praying that you'll ask them, you know, ask them for everything. If you can't wash a dish, ask them to wash, to help you wash the dish. You can't go to the bathroom. If you can't, if you have dental work and you're in pain. You know, I remember coming home from the dentist and I just surrendered the whole thing. I said, first acceptance and surrender. Dear God source, I accept 
I don't know how to heal this pain that I'm feeling right now. So I feel good right now and continuously throughout the night. I surrender it all to you. Please work through me, doing it all for me on my behalf for the well-being of all that I am now and so it is. And all of a sudden I felt, you ever had that, that old fashioned candy pop rocks? how it explodes in your mouth. Oh, yeah, back it in felt like they came right in. I just opened my mouth, laid on the sofa here. They came right in and in about five minutes, the pain was gone. Mm -hmm. And so everybody has access to this, you know? It's just like, it's just maybe they think they don't or that because, you know, and believe me, I was, before my awakening, before I, you know, went through this, you know, I'm on my center, in my central process now, but you know, I get it, but you know, and you experience, yeah, not, you're not, you, there's a purpose for them, for whoever, they're probably not listening to this podcast right now. If, you know, obviously if, if they're not already yeah. on the path, but right. prior to that, prior to being consciously aware of, of what's happening, you know, there's a purpose for that. You know, there's a reason everybody's mm. so, it's all, yeah. yeah. But it's very, I mean, surrender everything, just accept. I accept. That's all you have to say. I accept, because when you accept that you don't know how to do it, you open up space for the divine to be able to come and do it for you. For you, yeah, exactly. I remember Jesus said to me once, we need you to relinquish all control now. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm really grateful. My friend channeled um, him for me. And, she, and I said, oh, I relinquish, right away, you know, I relinquish all, every and all control over, you know, about everything and all now. I relinquish all judgments. I relinquish all expectations. I relinquish all feelings of having to rush. I did all that and I could feel it energetically, you know, just being released. Um, because you need to open and surrender does that. It brings you into the now and it opens that space so the divine can then come in. Because we're not here to do anything by ourselves at all. Nothing. Yeah which is so awesome. Like we're here to co-create, which means give it all to the universe. Make that to-do list. Give it all to them. I mean, you can have your own to-do list, which you realistically think you're going to get done, but they want to, they want to help. I mean, yeah, that's and the spiritual, and that, that asking and that requesting, like working with that spiritual law of requests is a key factor in, you know, because I truly believe that, I don't know if this is something you believe in or not, but um, that, you know, your guides and angels or whoever you believe in that is assisting you is more ready and willing and able to do it, you know, but you have to, you have free will and you can you have to ask, you have to yeah. ask, you have to initiate that spiritual law of request um, so that you can receive that guidance and then things can work out even better than you ever dreamed of or better than you ever imagined. And those, and those angels and those guides, those angels and guides um, are you. And I was in a, a group channeling event with Divine Archangel Raphael. Archangel Raphael was a guide of mine for many years during this eight year, nine, and still is during this eight year, nine year. A friend of mine um, uh, channels Divine Archangel Raphael has for 30 years. And, and you speak to the angel just like I'm speaking to you that clearly. She's so pure and clear of a channel. It's amazing. So I was directed by the divine to Raphael. And, and that's what started my process, basically. Um, oh. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, so Raphael in a group, in a group channeling one time at a yoga studio, I remember, um, we got together and Raphael said, oh, and Raphael's so loving and kind and ha ha ha, you know, comes through. So and said, of course, of course, you're going to take care of yourself. Of course, you're going to guide yourself. It's all you. Of course, you're going to provide for yourself. You just have to believe it because it's all you. You're the one, you know, of course, you're going to make sure you have enough money and abundance and this, that, because it's you on the other side of the veil. It's a, just the larger part of you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because like you said earlier, I mean, something to this effect, um, you know, we're not a body with a soul. We're a soul with a body in it. You know what I mean? It's it, the larger part of you remained on the other side of the veil. And that's your guidance. It's, it's all you. There's only one. I do the affirmation all the time. It is my pure intention. There's only one and I am that one. So be it. It's only me here. I'm the center of my own universe. You know, we're yeah. you and I are one. We're one with everything. And, and when you start, there's an exercise you can do too that, um, Two people brought it to my attention, but it came into my awareness recently. Um, you can just, and Raphael gave this to us too. You can go out all day long when you're driving the car or whatever. If you see a bird or whatever, um, you, you can say, I am that, I am. You know, because I am is God's source of name. And I am that, I am means I am that bird. I am that, I am, you know, and yeah. I am that. And start identifying because like I, took, like I said earlier, was sitting at the table, the waiter's always taking your order. So in that moment, you're telling the universe, you know, you're one with all things and it's all about oneness. And when you know you're one with all things and you've told the universe, you know, then that gets reflected back to you in your whole experience. That, that means you get connected and, and your inner being is sitting right now in your treasure chest of dreams mm -hmm. like that. And so when you know you're one 
with, with all, things, and all things, your, your inner being, you have the key to that treasure chest mm -hmm. and it just starts coming in your experience, just like yeah. flowing, flowing, flowing like crazy. Yeah. And separation really becomes the illusion. And you start to really play into this experience of recognizing that we are all connected to all things. That's amazing. I had a lot of experiences with, um, and when I initially opened up, um, with this concept at that time of oneness, that's what was coming through to me was examples of how everything was just all connected and that we were all one. And that's, uh, it's very, it's, it's amazing. I love it. I love it. Yeah, um, we're, we're certainly all one, you know, and another thing you can say when you're driving around is there I go again, being a bird, there I go again, being a piece of cement, there I go again, being a brick, there I go again, being a leaf blowing in the wind. You know, you can do that too, because you are literally one with, because we're all energy, it's source energy, pure love. And we're all, that's who we are. And we yeah. are one with it all. There's only yeah. one of us here. Yeah, that was one of, yeah, energy is not like you can't draw a line through it and be like, this, here's energy over here and then here's energy over here. It's all connected. Well, I got a good visual um, a couple months ago, which is a good way to explain it. Like, like back to the fuzzy TV, like if you have a fuzzy TV screen, it's all one energy, right? Say that's pure love. And then, but you can say we have a dots, dots on the screen and some of the dots are lighter and some of them are darker on the screen. It's still all that one energy, but you know, where you are on your evolutional, you know, journey and your ascension process, you may be lighter, you know, lighter in that screen. And, and then when you real, you know, when you ascend, become enlightened, you fade into the back, you know, you just one with all pure love um, and you disappear kind of thing, like the density disappears. Um, so I, I think of it like the dots on the screen and, um, you know, it's, there's no separation. It's like yeah. the air in the dining room, the air in the living room. You can go in the dining room and maybe smell smells of the kitchen, and then you walk into the living room and smell the fireplace, but it's still the same air. That's, that's a, yeah, that, I was just going to bring that up. I think I read that in Conversations with God by Neil Donald. Yeah, you Hoffman. did. You, I, I, I couldn't remember where I picked it up, but yeah, yeah that's, that it was a good, that's a good way of thinking of it. Or like, you know, you know, recognizing like we, you still feel that as if, you, you know, you have like this, you know, you have this identity, um, sort of like a drop in the ocean is still, you know, a drop, but it's also part of the ocean. There's no separation from it. Yeah, right? that's a good one. Yeah. Uh, I don't that's know where I got it from. I remember it, but when I read it, that, I read it somewhere. Who knows? I can't even remember. It, like, it, it resonated. And then, and then the experiences pop up to, to confirm in your reality, you know, like the experiences will pop up to confirm for you the synchronistic events. The yeah. And as you recognize those, when they do arise, that even gain, you know, everything's energy. It's about momentum. That even brings more momentum and adds to it more. And so you get more and more, more and more synchronicity, more and more synchronicity. As you, as you witness it, you even get more and more and more and more. It just keeps going. Right. I love it. So why don't you share with everyone that's listening or tuning in um, what you're up to? I know you talked briefly that you have a book coming out, but where can they find you if they just want to connect with you and get part of your world? Well, my, my, like I said, my, my, <laughs> My website is is not what I'm doing right now. I'm changing my website. It's under construction. But my website is a com a conversation with Kim .com, all lowercase. And but you can find me on Instagram. I have um, uh, Kimberly at Kimberly Barter, Kimberly and then B A R D E R. Okay, perfect. And I'll go ahead and put those in the short show notes. And then what is your book that you're working on going to be about? You want to just give a brief little like a little. It's going to be paper? about my journey and about the tools that I've gathered, just some of them, which I've mentioned to you. And it's just about my process and it's ever evolving and expanding. And it's just, that's what it's about. Because I feel like I can, you know, not everybody's going to do what they are going to do. They have their own there's no one right way to do it. You know what I mean? There's no, and, and there's no right or wrong anyway, but it's just me sharing my journey and hopes to help somebody else out. So. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm sure our, everyone that's listening is gleaned little nuggets of wisdom from this conversation. Thank so you. <laughs> uh, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate in. it. Thanks a lot. <laughs> You're welcome.